Welcome to Smart Investing Market Insights on TaipanFinancialNews.com. I'm Krista Das. Before we get started with today's program, I'd like to congratulate Thomas Vetter for winning the first round of the Stockonomous Fly Anywhere in the World Challenge. Using simulated dollars, Mr. Vetter managed to accumulate a whopping 579.22% gain to end round one with $679,219.56 in just 90 days, winning him an 8800 series BlackBerry smartphone. I had the opportunity to chat with Mr. Vetter about his knack for picking stocks, and this is what he had to say. As a beginner, it seems anybody with a sense of positive outlook and some research ability can make some fairly good choices for all of, his, for all of the information out there. I guess my philosophy is that one needs to keep positive and utilize all information available. An emphasis on the Chinese market has helped somewhat, but it also, it also almost destroyed my portfolio when LDK dropped huge amounts in a short time of three to four trading days. I guess I learned that you should never give up the ship, but sell when it's necessary, even if, you're, even if you have to take drastic losses. If you're interested in improving your trading skills and would like to enter the second round of the contest, you can do so by going to stockonomous.com. If you rack up the most gains by January 31st, you could win $1,500. And if you still have the most by July 31st, you and a partner will be flying anywhere in the world that you choose. Now, back to today's program. I have invited internationally renowned options trader who's been dubbed a market maven by CNBC, Karim Rahimtula, onto the program to discuss the economy of India and its surging stocks. Karim is one of the country's foremost specialists in options trading and, investment, and is the investment director of Mount Vernon Research. Karim, welcome to the program. Thanks, Krista. So, Karim, India's GDP growth is exploding, and you recently traveled there. You must have some powerful insights when it comes to investing in, in this emerging market. Tell us, is it time to bet on India? Well, you know, it, it's always going to be time to bet on India. The problem is that you've got to be selective about when you decide to actually put some money down. There's no doubt in my mind that India is one of the fastest growing economies and will continue to be so for a long period of time. But there are a lot of pitfalls that you have to be aware of before you invest in a, an emerging market period. And then India on top of that is a much more isolated case in an emerging market scenario where it's harder to actually buy and sell companies that you really want to. You're very limited in your uh, ability to trade Indian stocks. But it is one of those markets that you need to pay attention to. So give us the scoop, the good, the bad, the ugly. What did you notice when you went over there? Well, this is, my first, uh, this is the first time I was over there this year. I was there last year, and I was there about 10 years ago, and some things just haven't changed. Uh, I landed in Mumbai Airport. Uh, Mumbai is the new name for Bombay, and that airport is about 15 miles away from the hotel as the crow flies. Problem is, it took an hour and a half to get there, and no matter how you slice it, an hour and a half for a 15-mile ride is a sign of the times in India. They, they have no infrastructure whatsoever, and they keep saying they're going to be building it, and they haven't gotten to it yet. So actually, one of the best plays in India right now is infrastructure. Problem is, when are they going to get to it? Mm -hmm. Now, India, clearly, it, it has a long way to go, uh, infrastructure-wise, power outages, all of that. But what about the sentiment of India's people? It seems to me, as in China, that they want the American dream, just like we do. Well, they do, and we have to be very careful here. India has a population of about 1.1 billion, maybe 1.2 billion people. And of those 1.2 billion people, everybody wants to have a good life. The problem is you only have about 150 million people who can actually afford anything close to a good life. And so you still have over a billion people who have nothing today, they had nothing yesterday, and they're going to have nothing tomorrow. But those 150 million people that do have a life and do, have, do constitute that Indian middle class are going to be driving that economy. And they're very, very well aware of what it takes to move up uh, in the world and what it takes to achieve their so-called American dream, which is what they're all pursuing. Now, tell us about India's stock market. Is there opportunity here? 